You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. All right, folks, we are back. This is the Valley Labor Report. I have got on the line with me now Carol Gundelach from uh, Alabama Arise. She is going to be talking to us about Medicaid expansion, the American Rescue Plan impacts on the Alabama state budget, and the lottery. Uh, so, Carol, thank you so much for taking the time to join us on a Wednesday evening. I really appreciate it. We are glad to do it. So, Carol, first let's talk about Medicaid expansion. That is something that, as long as I've known about Alabama Arise, I've been more or less aware of them since probably 2017, 2018. That has been um, Alabama Arise's bailiwick. Uh, talk to us about Medicaid expansion in general, but also there are some interesting things specifically uh, this session. There, there are indeed. Um, we are as close now as we have ever been to expanding Medicaid. And it's really important to kind of understand how health insurance systems work to understand why this is so important. You know, many of us get our health insurance from our employer. Um, many others of us are covered by some kind of public health insurance like um, Medicare or Medicaid. Um, and um, some of us can buy insurance through the exchanges set up by the Affordable Care Act. But there is one big gap there where people who have too much money to qualify for Medicaid in Alabama, and you have to be pretty desperately poor to qualify for Medicaid in Alabama. Can you talk but to us about those qualifications really quick? Well, yes. Um, first of all, you have to be, if you are a child, um, children are covered um, up until a fairly significant, you know, um, above poverty rate, and then after that, they can uh, be covered by the Children's Health Insurance Plan, which covers children at an even higher rate. So generally speaking, we cover almost 100% of children in Alabama, either through the parents' insurance, Medicaid, or CHIP. People who are dis disabled and get SSI can receive Medicaid. Um, and people who are in nursing homes receive Medicaid. The people who don't receive Medicaid are people who are the working poor, which of course can be as many as 360,000 people in Alabama don't have any health insurance at all because their incomes are too high to get Medicaid because they're working and their incomes are too low to qualify on to get um, insurance through the Affordable Care Act exchanges. And those are the people that we want to be able to cover under Medicaid expansion. Um, it's the it's a, the lady who checks you out at the grocery store, the guy who bags your groceries, the, the person who works in the convenience store, the daycare center worker who takes care of your kids. Those are the folks we're trying to help here. And the issue with Medicaid expansion, well, beyond ideology, the, the issue that you hear most from legislators about Medicaid expansion is how are we going to pay for it? That we have a really sweet deal from the federal government uh, for every dollar we put up uh, in Alabama for Medicaid um, under the expansion rules, we'll get nine federal dollars. So it is a deal. The problem is, and legislators will say this over and over again, you gotta have the $1. And we are estimating that to expand Medicaid in Alabama will cost the state about $160 million in the first year. It's a lot of money. Um, and that has been the barrier all along because the legislature either can't or won't find that money. Now, we at Arise would probably say this means they won't find the money because we've had a number of proposals over the year, years for where that money can come from. Um, but be that as it may, 
the American recovery plan that was just passed by Congress sweetens that deal even more. And what they do is they really, and this is very complicated and very technical, but they increase what's the match rate, the amount of money we get from the feds for every dollar we put up for the entire Medicaid program, not just for the expansion population. And that means all of a sudden it's going to be incredibly cost effective for us to expand Medicaid. So it's time to do it and cover, give, provide insurance to those people that need it so desperately and are the people that we call essential workers. Right. Yeah, that, that's one of my least favorite things is people calling folks essential workers and then not being willing to do anything for them. I mean, that, that really, uh, you know, it's, it's like it, it, it's like setting up an applause for a bunch of nurses and then, you know, going on a union busting drive against their organizing efforts. But uh, um, in the American Rescue Plan, there is some added incentives for states to expand Medicaid. Does it go all the way and actually fully fund Medicaid expansion or is does it fully fund Medicaid expansion for one year or what is, you know, what are the specifics there? We, well, we are looking at um, numbers now. We know that the legislature is looking at numbers. The governor's office is looking at numbers. Um, because this is a complicated formula, we don't have definite numbers yet. But we think we think that we are going to be able to expand Medicaid for about three years without any significant increase um, to the general fund budget. And that'll give us at least that long to figure out what we are going to have to do after those three years. Now, we have a plan and we have a proposal that we have had on the table for a long time at Arise that um, Alabama has a very peculiar um, tax break for the wealthiest people in the state. Um, it is a break where people can deduct their federal taxes when calculating their state income taxes. Um, it's we're one of only a handful of states that does this. And it um, disproportionately benefits the richest people in the state. Last numbers we looked at, if we got rid of that tax break, we'd bring in about 185 million new dollars into the state of Alabama. That would more than fund Medicaid expansion. So what we're hoping is that we can take advantage of this um, a uh, new federal match rate and expand now, and then that'll give us some time to debate how we continue to fund it. Right, right, right. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think that makes a lot of sense. So you said that you feel like there are, that, that y'all are a lot closer to this than you have been in the past. Why do you feel that way? We feel that way because when we started this conversation, my goodness, when the Affordable Care Act passed, however many years ago that was, what we were hearing were ideological objections. We were hearing objections about socialized medicine and Obamacare and what happens if the feds yank the money out from under us and um, and we don't do things like that in Alabama because we believe in pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. We're hearing those kind of arguments. We're not hearing those arguments anymore, and we haven't been hearing them for the last couple of years. What we're hearing now is argument, discussions about how the numbers look. How can we pay for this? How can we re maintain this? Um, how can we continue this past the first couple of years? And what we, a couple of years ago, last year, we were hearing, well, yeah, that's a real, that'd be great, but we don't have the money. Now what we're hearing, legislators and the governor's office saying to us is, we want to take a really close look at this. We're getting our, you know, out where I get in our experts to run the numbers. We're really considering this. Um, we think that this could happen if the numbers line up right. So we're hearing, going all the way from, no, we will never do anything like this 
to, we've just got to figure out the details. That is a lot better. <laughs> and now it's going to be Katie and call. Oh, no worries, no worries. So. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that, that is definitely a lot better. That, that's, a, that's a lot better situation. Um, are, is there anything else that you wanted to say about the Medicaid expansion? Or I think, I, I think that's, that's a pretty good summary of the situation there myself. I think that's a situation we're hearing good stuff from both sides of the aisles. We've got some Republicans who are saying the right things. You know, we, we, we think we're closing the deal. We hope.